My Ken Erlotter here, the Dean of Power Wash, and today I want to share with you five tips that you can use to reduce your taxes before the end of the year in 2022. The first one I'm going to talk about is deductions. So what are deductions? Deductions are expenses that you have in your company. So anything that you can pay off in the month of December, pay it in the month of December. Look toward January, possibly February, if you've got the cash flow, and pay those expenses off early. Because if you pay them off in this tax year before 1231, December 31st of this year, you can deduct those in this year and reduce your taxable income for the year. So basically what I'm recommending is look ahead, project what you're going to be paying for next year, buy it this year. The other deduction you can use are charitable contributions. So if you have a church you want to donate to, you have a, uh, an organization that you, you support a lot, make that charitable contribution this year and you get the deduction. Keep in mind, some people confuse charitable contributions in the fact that they think it's like a credit. Whatever your tax rate is, if you pay 100 or you donate $100 and you're taxed at 30%, you'll get $30 deduction or $30 off your taxes. Let me rephrase that. So remember, accelerated deductions will do expenses and charitable contributions. Do them early, do it for December 31st. It'll reduce your taxable income. The second thing I want to recommend that you do is defer income. So if you're doing work in the month of December, the last couple of weeks, don't bill it till after the first of the year. Once you bill it, then it's and, and invoice it, then it falls in as taxable income for next year. You're just deferring the income to next year to pay taxes on it next year. But it will help you out this year, especially if you think you're going to be in a higher tax bracket and you believe next year you're going to be in a lower tax bracket, you definitely want to push that income into next year. If it's the same in your cash flow situation, it's up to you how you do it. But the one thing I will, the caveat I'll add to this is that because of inflation, the value of a dollar this year is more valuable to you than what it will be next year because of inflation. It'll be less valuable. So if you can defer any taxes to next year to do that, you're going to get more use out of it this year by saving that money and using it for things within your business. Last or the third thing I want to talk to you, not the last thing, um, is a tax structure. So sometimes I would never recommend a small business do this, but they end up setting as a C corp. Don't do that because if you set yourself up as a C corp, you get taxes at corporation. And then when you pull your contribution or your dividends from it, you get taxed again. You don't want to do that. That's double taxation. And, um, I know the tax laws changed a few years ago and there was some confusion around this, but it's still best to be an S corp or a partnership when you do this. So I want to talk about S corps a little bit because sometimes they're confusing for people. So if you set yourself up as a limited liability corporation, you're protecting yourself legally within that structure. So that it's a separate entity. So if something happens to the company, gets sued, it doesn't come back on you. The great thing about being an S corp is that it's a pass through of income, which comes directly onto your income tax at the end of the year. So you get taxed at your personal rate, not like a C corp would get taxed. I hope that makes sense. So C corp gets taxed. You do a dividend, you get taxed again on your personal income tax. If you're an LLC, which is another form of a corporation, limited liability corp, it doesn't, it doesn't get taxed. It flows through to you as an S corp on your income tax and gets taxed at your personal rate. The other thing you can do is be a partnership or an entrepreneur who you're just, you're just running the company as yourself, as a sole proprietor or entity in that situation, in either one of those circumstances, um, you are exposing yourself to liability as you run the company. So from a legal perspective, I wouldn't recommend you do either one of those. I would be an LLC 
and just especially for those who have started this year and don't know that, I would get set up as an LLC as fast as you can and then elect to be an S Corp on your income taxes at the end of the year. So it's a pass through and you protect yourself that way. So you, you get two benefits from it. And then the, the next um, way to reduce your taxes, number four, is to contribute to your IRA, your individual retirement account. So 401ks are good at this because 401ks defer taxes. So especially at your the higher tax bracket right now, making good, com making good income with your company, or you've got a side gig and you're making good money on with another and you're looking to go into being a full-time guy, look at what your tax bracket is. If you can reduce that income now and pay it when you retire, because normally when people retire, they, their tax bracket drops because they don't have all the income that they're producing. They're, 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 they're living on a reduced amount of funds that is coming and being distributed. And when your income drops, that tax bracket drops as well. And I think, um, I think the highest tax bracket right now is 37%. Um, then it's 35 and I think it goes down to 32 depending on where you're at. But I expect most people in the industry are anywhere from 24 on up to 37. And uh, so look at that, look at what you can contrib contribute. I don't know what the exact numbers are. In the past, it's been around $5,000 you can do within a tax year. That's probably changed. I don't have a link for that, but uh, check that out and see if you wanna do that to, to uh, contribute to your retirement funds. And if you're married, you can double that impact. I believe you can double that amount. Don't hold me to that, but it's, it's another way to reduce your income. And the last one, section 179. I really like this section. I'll tell you why I like it. Because in section 179, you can go buy equipment that's normally depreciates out over five, seven, or 10 years. With one section 179, you don't have to elect to depreciate it. You can expense the entire amount in this year. So let's say you need a new power washer, you need a new truck, you need a new soft wash system, um, you need a, a, a new computer, whatever that expense is that's normally gets depreciated out over five, seven, 10 years, you don't have to do that this year. You can just expense it out in this tax year. The reason I like that because it follows more of a cash flow process. So if you got the cash to buy these funds, you expense it out this year, you get the benefit this year. Downside to that is if you, well, if you don't expense it out this year, then you're getting the benefit later on as you go into the later years or the, over the, the, those depreciation years. And remember what I said about that is that the value of that dollar is less than you'd rather get that recognized this year, save that money and be able to use that money for things that are more important in your company because the value of the dollars much, much more. And when we're running around seven to 9% inflation, that's a big deal, really big deal. So I would do section 179. Now the caveat to this, and you can still do this. So here's another thing you can do, which is good too. You can go take a loan to buy equipment today and reduce your taxes <laughs> because you took a loan. You really didn't even spend any money and now you get a reduction. Now keep in mind, this is the great thing about this. You will still be deducting that out in future years, but you won't get the reduction in your taxes from it because you took it all this year, which is still a benefit because you got more value in that dollar this year than the value of those dollars going forward. Now you'll pay that tax. You won't get those because you'll be paying the loan back. It won't be deductible that year or be, um, be able to expense out that year, which I like that process. I think that's really good forecasting because the dollar is dropping in value. I know this doesn't make sense, but trust me on this to some of you that don't get it. It's better to take a loan to buy equipment today, especially if you know you're going to have the business and it's worth it, and then not have that tax deduction in the future and get the tax deduction today. It's a huge benefit. And if you look in the comments below, right now <clears throat> you can do up to $1 million, and then there's a phase-out period, I think, that goes between $1 million to $2.5. Um, 
I don't know that tax code ex exactly right, but I'll put a link to the tax calculator so you can go in and put in your numbers, put in your tax bracket, you'll hit calculate, and it'll tell you basically, and, and I know what this is right off the top of my head because I just did it. If you spend a million dollars on equipment, you're gonna get a $350,000 tax deduction this year. Um, well, yes, um, let me rephrase that. If you spend a million dollars on equipment this year, you get that will re because that's an expense. And let's say you're at 35%, you'll get a $350,000 deduction on your taxes this year, which basically means you spent 650,000 on that equipment because you're not paying that in taxes, but that's in this year. You will pay <laughs> going forward as you pay that off. If you do a loan, differently. So I know that might be a little confusing. I hope that makes sense how I explained it and it works out for you, but definitely take advantage of section 179. If you need to do any purchase it, do it this year, highly recommend it. Um, and it, you know, if, if, and if it's power wash equipment, obviously we can help you out at powerwash.com. Um, and if it's not us and another distributor, do it. I mean, take that advantage. I want you to take advantage of these things and reduce your taxes this year. So again, let me go over them real quick. The five things are deductions, deferred income, your tax structure, go for that S corp. I have five different businesses and they're all set up as S corps and contribute to a retirement fund and then section 179. So those are five ways you can reduce your taxes before the end of 2022. I'm Mike Kinderlite, Dean of Power Wash. I hope you have a safe, successful week. We'll catch you next time. Take care.